Hello, I'm Mrs. Jansen, and today we're going to create the view through a circular window as our art. First, let's learn some vocabulary word. The word view means all that can be seen from a certain place. The person looking is called the viewer. We've got three vocabulary words that are parts of a picture. The first is foreground. That's the area of the picture, artwork or photo that appears closest to the viewer, usually at the bottom of the picture. The background is the area of the picture, artwork or photo that appears farthest from the viewer. It's usually at the top of the picture. The middle ground is the area of the picture, artwork or photo between the foreground and the background. It's usually in the middle of the picture. In the top right, you can see of an example of what our art might look like. Views through windows have inspired many artists. We're gonna learn about two different artists that created their view really differently. The first artist was Frederick Edwin Church. He was an American artist and he painted realistic landscapes from his window. His artwork looks similar to a photograph. This photo shows the artist's view. He could see treetops, the Hudson River, and the Catskill Mountains. He painted his view in all four seasons winter, spring, summer, and fall, or autumn. His home is now a historic site that you can visit to look out his window. It is located in a small community called Greenport in Hudson, New York. Historic French artist Henry Matisse created what he called open window oil paintings. He loved color and pattern. His art looks very different than real life. This artist created many different types of art throughout his life. He created drawings, paintings, collages, and sculptures. He also planned and designed a chapel with stained glass windows. Making plans for a building is architecture, and architecture is also a form of art. When you look through Henry Matisse's open window, you see how this artist used his imagination. His art does not look exactly the way things look in real life. So now we're getting ready to create our artwork. You're gonna need a piece of paper, a pencil, crayons for later, and a non-breakable circular item like a plate that you can trace. It should be a small plate or a bowl that when you trace it, it fits on your paper. If you don't have something that's non-breakable handy, you can always uh, create your artwork on the paper that you have in front of you, and yours can be a rectangular shaped window. You're gonna see the screen change so that we can draw together. So here you see our paper, and for today, uh, we're gonna start portrait style. That means our paper is vertical, the tall way. Make sure you have your family's permission to use any household item, and it should be non-breakable. I'm gonna use a plate, and just place your plate on your paper, press on it firmly, um, you've got to turn the plate over and then trace around it. So you can do this with a plate or a bowl. And you might have to go around it a couple of times. All right, so now we've created a circular window. If you um, are not tracing something round, you can think of your window as a rectangular shape. 
So we talked about parts of a picture, the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. And the first thing that we're going to notice when we look through this window is that we see a tree. So we're going to start the tree in the center. And as you know, there's a lot of different trees in nature. So all of the trees are not the same. So the tree that you're drawing does not have to look the same as the tree that you see me drawing. A lot of times I use V's or Y's when I add the branches. So notice how you can see the letter V, the opening between the branches, and a lot of times you can see the Y in the shape of the branch. All right, so we've got the overall shape of our tree and then you can go back. I'm going to add a little heavier pressure on the outside edge and inside edge of the branches. a lot of different trees so you can draw your tree in any way that you'd like and remember that we all draw in different ways so even if it looks like we're drawing the same thing one of the greatest things about art is that we all make it different Right, and now I want to use my pencil and create the texture of tree bark. So I'm going to use a little bit lighter pressure than I used on the edges. And when I add the lines, I'm going to add those differently. I'm going to make sure they're not all the same. So a lot of times the texture that we add can be in layers and we'll, we'll start adding some texture but you may add some texture later as you finish your artwork. You can add additional texture and cramp. Thank you. 
So remember to always uh, step back from your artwork a little bit. Sometimes it helps to pick up your artwork and look at it at arm's length. And that's when you can decide an area that you think that you need to add something to. Right, so we've created texture on the tree. We can add more later, but now we want to think about what do we see in the middle ground? So the tree is in the foreground, and I'm going to say that I see a field. I'm just going to add a line for the field. And then in the distance, beyond that field or meadow, I see a mountain. So you can decide what you'd like the top of the mountains to look like. I think I'm going to have these mountains look a lot like the mountains that we see around Temecula. And now it's time for you to add your imagination in the background. So in the example, um, you are going to notice that you see a lot of different types of weather. And you can add different types of weather in the background. This doesn't have to be a realistic uh, work of art. You can use your imagination. You could show different types of weather through the view, through the different branches. You could also show different seasons. You can use different lines and textures and shapes. So now it's time for you to start adding details. And uh, when you see me draw, these are just some examples. I think I'm gonna use another line just to add a design to the top of the mountains. So my art is not going to look like art looks in real life. And in this field, I think I'm going to have some plants growing. And they don't have to all look the same or be the same height. And along the top edge of this field or meadow, I want to add a texture to the mountains. I think I'm going to use a lot of different shaped ovals and overlap some. I don't want all of these to look the same. Now you don't have to be adding ovals or circles. You might have come up with another idea that you wanted to create for texture. And those shapes that you use or lines that you use can overlap.
So I just got started with the texture on the mountains, and now I'm going to think about what type of things I'd like to show through the background. Now, some of you might decide that you want to show different times of day. Maybe you want to show a sunrise or a sunset, or maybe you'd like to show part of the sky at night. That's up to you. I'm going to use vertical lines to create weather. And this is more stylized. I'm going to be using different lines and shapes to create a style of rain. So I just added that vertical line, and I'm going to add small rounded triangles for the raindrops. And then I'm going to add clouds. Remember, clouds are moving. They're an organic shape. But I'm going to add a line design on top of the clouds, a spiral. And I'm going to create the night sky. And again, this is stylized, so I'm going to use my own style to create the stars. And I know you've got great ideas, so this is where you use them. You can decide what your view is outside your window. I like uh, what that vertical line did, so I think I'm even going to add that behind the stars. You don't have to draw all the stars the same. I think I'm going to show a spiral line to look like a wind. And again, an artist can use different lines and shapes to represent things. And it doesn't have to look exactly like things look in real life. Different times of day, I've got the night sky, and I think I'm going to have the sunrise.
think I'm going to add some horizontal lines. So the whole time that you're adding your own ideas to your artwork, step back from it and decide how you want to add things differently to add visual interest. I decided to do horizontal lines because I knew that I had used the vertical lines on the mountain. So I'm going to go back and just use a heavier pressure at the top of the mountains. And remember that something in the foreground appears closest to the viewer. So the tree needs to stand out the most. So I just noticed that I had applied some heavier pressure on the mountains and it was looking pretty similar to the tree. So I decided I'm gonna go back and add some heavier pressure on the tree. So this is your art and you can decide how you complete it, what materials you use. There's going to be some artists that prefer to stay in pencil. That's also called graphite. So if you decide that you'd like to keep everything in pencil, all you have to do is make sure that you show different values, darks and lights and that you've used your pencil in different ways to create different texture. You can use crayons or any other material that you'd like to complete your artwork. And I hope you enjoyed uh, creating a view through a circular window today. And I look forward to making art with you again soon.